Today, I'll be sitting down with my good friend, Dr. Mike Bat, aka Batman, as we talk about the importance of showing up in the world. Welcome to the Awakening You podcast, reminding you that the answers are within. My name is Scott Goyette, and I'm your host. Each week in this podcast, I will be sharing some simple yet very useful tools to help you dive deep and discover how infinitely powerful you really are. The show is based on specific growth models created by the Go Love Now movement that will help you choose love and move through your fears. The love model, L-O-V-E, stands for listening, observing, voicing, and empathizing. The fear model, F-E-A-R stands for forgiving, eliminating beliefs that no longer serve you and may have never served you, accepting yourself and others where you or they are at in their journey, and rising up and becoming resilient. During each podcast, my amazing guests will share their experience with using these tools and how you might benefit from using them as well. All information shared during this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. Nothing from this podcast should supersede the directions of a doctor or mental health professional. And today's guest is a new friend of mine. He's somebody I've come to really enjoy being around because his energy is always positive. He didn't start out with everything so easy, though, and we're going to talk today a little bit about his upbringing and where he came from. We're going to have a two-part show because I think it's that important because his story really is that good. Meet my new friend, Dr. Mike Batt. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good. How are you? Scott, thank you so much for the kind words. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. And I feel the same way about your energy and kind of what you bring to the picture and, you know, our team. And we just have, you know, loved working with you and you bring so much, uh, you know, just enlightenment to me and, you know, in a speaking career uh, on ways to uh, make myself better at it, you know, and so that thank you so much for having me on as well. No, I love it. I love it. And there's so many things that we're going to talk about in the second edition of this podcast with you. But before we start talking about Dr. Bat, aka Batman, I would really like to dive deep into going back to your childhood, because one of the things we talk about on this show, it's the awakening you. And it's very important for people to realize that all the brilliance and the genius lies within. But sometimes we need a coach or we need people out there, mentors to help bring that out of us. So I would like to hear a little bit about your story before we tell them all the brilliance you're sharing today and tell them a little bit about who was Mike long before Dr. Mike came to be, who was Mike? Like, tell me that story. Sure. Sure. You know, it's, it's a, I've lived in a lot of countries. I was, my parents are from India originally. Uh, Mom is from Mumbai. Dad is from Ahmedabad. Um, and so they, they immigrated to England uh, in the 60s. Uh, my sister and I were born in Manchester, England. Manchester, uh, city fan for sure. Um, and then we moved, immigrated from uh, England to Montreal uh, in the uh, 70s. And then, so we lived in a French neighborhood in Montreal, which is always interesting. A British kid with a funny accent and you're brown. And, you know, it's, it's a, lived in Montreal for a few years and then moved to Calgary for where I grew up most of my life. Went to undergraduate at the University of Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, studied chemistry there. And then I moved to uh, Houston to go to a chiropractic school in uh, the late 80s. I finished my uh, schooling there, my graduate school and my doctorate. And then I moved to Austin, Texas, where I have lived for the last gee, 28 years. 28 years. You've been here a few years longer than me. I've only been here 24, I think. I'll have to do the counting. 20, 24, yeah, because I started graduate school in 96. So great. Yeah, Very and cool. I just I recently became a United States citizen four months ago. Wow, um, congrats. Thank you very much. It was, it was an honor, a great honor. And uh, you know, the turmoil in our country, we have to kind of understand. It's, it's uh, interesting. I never thought I would come into it at this time, but we have to deal with what we got. Yeah, no doubt. Well, let's talk about that journey. So, you know, you're a young kid growing up, you know, you, you come from India and you're moving to England and then suddenly you're in Montreal and, and then you're here. I mean, that, that's quite a journey. Let's talk about each of those phases of your life, because once again, our audience members, one of the big things about the Speaking to the Heart podcast network and the Awakening You is we're helping people overcome the challenges they face. So you must have faced, and I know you have because we've talked about it, many challenges in your life where you could say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I'm not going to put the effort in. Maybe I'm not going to do the work. 
but something inside you drove you to beat these things that seemed like they were going to stop you. And I think our audience needs to see people who are successful even more and realize that their journey wasn't always easy by any means. So start us back when, you know, let's say you're five years old. What, what, what's Mike doing then? Yeah, you know, at five, we were still in England, and then we moved to Montreal. And, you know, I remember a lot of things as a kid in England, but most of my sort of uh, solidification, who I am and what I was wanting to accomplish, uh, happened when I was a kid in Montreal. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, being a brown kid in a French neighborhood in Montreal back in the uh, in the 70s, you know, that wasn't a common thing for people to see. And I spoke funny, and, you know, so they're always a victim of kind of that kind of discrimination and racism. And yeah, I kind of, my, kind of I remember going home one day after school and just looking at my mom and dad and just being sad about something. I said, you know what, son? They said, you know, son, we did the same thing, you know? And so they, yeah. they kind of boosted me up. I said, you know, you can let this drag you down or you can make it, a, make you a stronger person. Right. Um, you know, and so I, I, I knew that I had to take the higher road. You always have to take the higher road learning from, from my parents who did so much. Uh, learning to speak the language and immigrating so many times, their story about having two suitcases and $50. And it's amazing. I mean, my dad's story changes. It went from $50 to $75. So, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it is inflation. I mean, let's face yeah, yeah, it. That's yeah. fair. That's reasonable. But you know, that's always <laughs> been, um, they've always been my kind of guiding light and, and beacon, you know, as far as just seeing what they went through and overcame. Uh, because as a child, you see the same thing around your parents too. It happened to my, I saw it happen to my parents a couple of times. And so it's, it's kind of one of those, you can let that drag you down, but it helped to build me and my character because uh, you never give up, right? You always have to keep pushing ahead and you have to overcome whatever's put in front of us. And so that's kind of uh, where I sort of built my character as a young person was uh, living in, in Montreal at the time. So, so that's, so that's beautiful. And I, and I know a lot of us, you know, we find those people who are our rocks or our anchors or those folks that we can look up to. And sometimes it's a mom or dad. Sometimes it's a teacher. Sometimes it's a friend. Sometimes it's got to be us. We're the only ones there. So I'm hearing a lot that you had some good pillars of strength in your life through mom and dad. What can we tell our viewers? Because here's the thing. At some point, they may have been there to support you. But what was it that you were doing to receive those lessons to go out and find success, even when you are the little brown kid? Because, I mean, I've been to Montreal, too. It's I mean, I, I don't even know just being white, even somebody who's not speaking French. I mean, like everyone wants you to be just like them. So, you know, we're, we're all the outcasts there. We just bring money to their city so they're okay with it, but it's tough. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, th I think it's just, uh, I, I, that's a good question, Scott. I mean, I don't know, uh, it's, a, it's always a character, every day is a character building day, right? And I don't know if you can point to one, you know, or two or three circumstances that might have built your character. I think you build it, a character's built every day. And I think that uh, the lessons that you learn or you kind of go through and, and follow through and, and try to become a better person um, and help push each other people up, right? And, and carry them on your shoulders if you have to. When they're down, you know, you can kind of see that and know that you have to also help those around you too. It's never a self-serving thing, right? It's always helping those around you as well. So you just said two really nice things there. You talked about the fact that take things day by day. Like so many of us look at, I'll never get up that mountain. And it's a one step at a time thing. So, so I love that. The other thing I like that you said is you talked about the idea of connection. You know, right there, it's, it's one of the best things you can do. And we say this again and again, when, when you're hurting or when you, you feel like the outcast to support others helps build you up. And that's something that, that's not an easy thing to do. When you're hurting to go help somebody else is not the easiest thing to do, but it sounds like you did that. So, so in Montreal, how long were you, were you there again? How long did we you live there? Montreal? About six, five, six years. Um, and then my parents said, we got to get out of here. And they moved, wanted to go out West. You know, that's where all the business was. My dad's an engineer. And so all the oil and gas. And so he's an oil and gas engineer. And naturally that took him to Alberta and to Calgary. So, um, and how old were you then? I was in the elementary school. I think I was in the eighth, seventh grade or grade seventh seven, grade. as they say in Canada. Man, that is such a tough time to move, though, in the middle of middle school. So how'd that go? How do, so you show up in, in Calgary. What does that look like? Same sort of thing. I mean, I was, uh, I'd already built some character and I already built, you know, I, I'd learned martial arts myself. So I knew how to protect myself. You know, I just kind of um, knew that it was going to, it was a new beginning. And, you know, not that Montreal was a bad thing by any means. You know, I'm a big Montreal Canadiens fan to this day. And, you know, Montreal, I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of love in my heart for Montreal. 
In fact, a funny story, Scott, my mom and I saw Nadia Comaneci get her perfect 10s in Montreal mm -hmm. in the 76 Olympics. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, so, you know, then moving to Calgary, you know, I knew that I developed, I had to find new friends. You always have to find friends, right? And I go through the same troubles or whatever. And, but you find your group of friends that you trust and you love and know that they love you. And so, you know, it was sort of, um, I think a lot of it's built on, on what happens in the past and you build on it in the future and you continue to grow and, and uh, overcome and build your purpose in life, you know? I, I get it. I get it. Well, so I'm hearing, I'm hearing a couple things and, and, and it's nice to hear this because first and foremost, you found those people who were pillars to support you and mom and dad. But you really seem to realize that, you know, this world is ultimately, what are you going to do here? And so you figure that out. So hopefully our audience members are hearing that because when they start to see the things you've accomplished, they're going to really see how much you've done. Um, let's talk a little bit about your mom and dad, though, because you've told me a few stories about them. And, and I'd like to preface it with this. When you explain your mom and your dad, they literally sound to me like two beautiful people that are equal opposites of our own brain. Your dad sounds like the super analytical, you said he's the engineer mind, and mom's the creator, the nurse type, the loving, you know, I want to build and support. And so it's interesting. It's almost like, you know, your command center and your support system literally was the, the perfect match of the human brain that you've got both those pieces. Tell me a little bit about how they interacted and how you were wise enough to take a little bit of both of them and find that balance, because I see you doing a good job with that. Thank you, Scott. That's a, that's a great, that's a great question. A great point. I think that you have to know that you have to have a, a right and a left brain. You have to have, you have to have some built up in both sides of you, right? You have to, maybe you're more right brain dominant, maybe you're more left brain dominant. And those are only things that you find out as you go through schooling and, you know, never a huge math fan, believe it or not. I surprise people anytime they go, Hey, I get this math question. They look at me directly. I'm like, Whoa, you're, I'm the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm a uh -huh. science guy. I'm, a, I'm an anatomy science guy, you know, from that standpoint. So yes, my dad was definitely more the analytical person. He was the dad, right? He was uh, the person that you never wanted to hear your mom say, all right, wait till your dad gets home. You know, mm. but he never, it was always kind, you know, never, ever touched. A, he was just a great man, but he was very analytical, right? He was, the, he was also growing up. I was more around my mom and just kind of, I was a mama's boy. And, you know, and uh, so you learn to the, her traits as a creative person. And so that kind of built who I was going to be uh, based on what I saw, because I knew that I wasn't going to sit in front of a computer and do spreadsheets or whatever. You know, I knew that that was not for me. I was, more you, you weren't going to be an actuary. That wasn't was that not going to be an actuary. I was not going to, I was not going to help you uh, insurance companies with their life insurance plans and, and, and you know, all that stuff. No, that was not me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me ask you this real quick then. If we're ever golfing together and your score looks lower, you're not cheating. You're just not good at math. <laughs> That's correct. Okay. That's okay. Correct. okay. We'll, we'll pass that. I just wanted to check. Okay. <laughs> we can use the same thing for me then. If it's suddenly I have a 78, you but you thought it was 178, we'll just say that it was uh, poor math. There you go. If my creative brain overtook me. <laughs> so cool. So you're, you're with your mom a lot and, uh, you know, being with your mom, you're, you're in that creative, you know, that creative space. Like, tell me more about that. Um, cause you shared some stories with me that are, are interesting in seeing how your mom and dad reacted. And, uh, there's some good lessons behind there too. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to hear one of the stories or what do you, I do actually. And I know our audience does too. So tell me <laughs> one of those stories. <laughs> I, I got, I've got a good one. Um, so Scott, have you ever not, taken a bath for a month or been scared of water for a month? I can honestly say, um, no, I've never, I've never, I'm a clean guy. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Here's a story. So we are kids in Montreal, probably eight at the time, seven or eight at the time. And we decide I'd never been to the beach. My, my sister had never been to the beach. My parents had never been to the beach. So they're like, let's go to Ocean City, Maryland. And I go, Ocean City, Maryland. That sounds pretty cool. It sounds great. So we hop in the station wagon. I'm sure it was a witty wagon at the time. And we haul down to, to um, Ocean City, Maryland. And we check into the hotel and we get in the, the station wagon to go to a drive-in movie that night before, you know, before the next day. So we pull into the drive-in movie and we sit there. We have our popcorn and on comes no other movie than Jaws. Scott Jaws. I see where this is going now. <laughs> so my sister and I look at each other in the car. I remember looking at her in the back seat, going, "Is this for real?" <laughs> so the next day, 
parents are oblivious to the whole thing. You know, whatever. I mean, they're, they're just kids. They're going to get in the water. So we get to the beach the next day. And I, I'm just sitting on, on my towel in the beach. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going in there. No way. And my mom's like, what do you, just go in the beat, go in the water. Nope. Didn't do it the first day. So and I was, you know, it was hot. I was sweating on the beach and so we get back to the hotel and she said, go take a shower. And I go, nope. Nope. <laughs> so a full month goes by? <laughs> no, it wasn't. I mean, there's no way she, anybody, nobody would have let that happen. <laughs> the next day we, you know, we, we got, uh, we finally got into the ocean, but you know, it's, uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's an uh, interesting story about not understanding the, the relevance of going to see Jaws the day before you take your kids the first time to the beach. I love it. So that that's, and I think we were talking about that too, with the, you know, the whole idea of actions and consequences and, you know, being a parent now myself, you know, you look back at all the times that you would do something and there's a certain action, you just don't see the consequence coming. So, so tell me, I mean, a little bit about your life, like some of the things that, um, you know, as things progress, like how did that lesson of actions and consequence help you build yourself? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, when, whenever, <laughs> you go through a character building experience like that. And it wasn't that horrific, trust me, but you never know. No, but you remember them and they're funny. And yeah. Well, you know, it was kind of one of those things. The first time I got in the water, Scott, I was, I was craning my neck around so bad that I was figured this may be my career as a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> it was stuck backwards. You, yeah, you're looking back for, behind you. <laughs> for the dorsal fin. Um, so, <laughs> so, like you, know, it's, you know, I think we all have lessons in life that we decide this is what maybe our career path might be lead us down a path of, of being a giver or, you know, I don't know. I've always loved to take care of people and you know, that's the analytical mom side, I guess. Um, so I helped to kind of uh, build some character more again. It's more of a character building thing than anything. You know, I, I don't, I don't know if this ex particular experience led me to my career that I chose, but uh, it certainly uh, built character to, to be able to do certain things. Absolutely. And, and it's fun. You know, you and I have talked about it, too. It's we, we were kind of dissecting going through our paths as, you know, we grew up and some of those lessons and what do they mean? Because so many times something, you know, I always talk about this. You get the tap on the shoulder in life like like life is Earth University. It really is. You know, you, you've got a degree in doctor of chiropractic. I've got an MBA, whatever. Those are universities. But this is the master university. And so many times we get a tap on the shoulder and we kind of brush it off. Then you get kind of punched and we go, oh, that hurt. And we brush it off. So a lot of times it takes a full freight train or, you know, a Jaws incident or whatever to help us learn that lesson. And so that's just how we are. You know, we, we each respond in a different way to our learning. So I've got another question for you. One of the stories that you told me that I, I really enjoyed, too, because I saw some depth to it. You were telling me about a pair of shoes that you, you got one time uh, that you paid a lot of money for. And, and then there's a lot of relevance to that, too. And I, I think that's really why you you found your dream i think it was those shoes so tell everybody that story absolutely this, this is a great story so scott I, I played basketball i played lots of sports in high school and for you know an indian kid i think in our high school we had i don't know six seven indian kids you know and i played on the basketball team i kicked on the football team for a year until my mom said you're not gonna do that anymore so i was a kid you know I was you know gonna play for the basketball team and i just went to uh, a basketball camp in, in Baltimore, Maryland. And I bought a pair of, and I saved up for them. I went, consulted my mom on it. I said, I want a pair of the original Air Jordans. This was back in 1985. And she goes, mm -hmm. okay, how much? And I said, they're 150 bucks. She's like, 150 bucks? This is back in 1980. Yeah, it's 500 like, plus dollars today. So sure enough, she said, don't tell your dad. And so I saved up the money. I worked, you know, I uh, worked at tip top selling clothing. And then I worked on a farm, um, you know, helping on a farm. And it was, it was great, but I saved up the money and I bought these Air Jordans. So we're playing in the city high school championship game. I was a point guard, had a quick little, nice little jumper, quick first step, you know, I had my Air Jordans on, by the way, the most uncomfortable shoes ever. Um, <laughs> And so my mom and dad are in, in the crowd watching the game and they never came to games. They came to this one because it was a city championship. And um, a guy sitting next to my parents says, oh my God, you're, is that your son on the basketball court? And my parents were like, well, he's the only Indian guy on there. Yeah, that's, my, that's our yeah, son. That's my kid. <laughs> so they said, he said to him, he said, wow, those, he's got those Air Jordans on. He, they said, he said, those are really, really expensive. My mom says, yes, they were $50. And the, my, the guy, I mean, she was like, oh my God, no, stop. She looked at him like, 
she told me, she said, she looked at the guy like, don't, don't say anything else. Don't say anything else. And he goes, wow, you got a really good deal on those. <laughs> <laughs> because if my dad would have found out that I spent $150 on a pair of basketball shoes. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> so, so I, so I enjoy, I, I like, I like where you're going with that too, because you know, we were talking about your mom, like every time you'd speak about your mom, I could really hear that she was part of the foundation for, for your dreams. And I almost feel like that was metaphorical buying those shoes. That was, that was the dream. Like once you, I mean, here's something that we know to be true. If I were to give you a free gym membership right now and you're not in shape, you're not getting in shape. But if you spend the money and invest in yourself to go to that gym, you're going to the gym. And, and that to me, when you told me that story, cause you wanted to play basketball, you wanted to connect, you want to, you know, that was your investment. That's something that I feel like a lot of people miss is that's the dream. You know, you might've spent too much money on the shoes or whatever. And when you, when you say that and you're talking about that connection with your mom and you bought these, I can just really see you in a turning point right there. Like, tell me more about that. Like, tell me how you felt when you put those shoes on. Yeah, I mean, I felt great because everybody on the team was like, man, you got those Air Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> You're the cool kid in the block now. Yeah, right. I got the Jordans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I think, it, you know, we have to invest in our dreams, right? And then that is an investment, like you said. And so it, if my parents would have given me the $150, I think it would have yeah. had a different value, right? No they doubt. said, yeah, my mom said, you can do it, but you got to earn the cash for it. And I said, that's cool. You know, and I think that when you invest in a dream, it, it, you know that, uh, you know, success will follow, right? I think you have to always... Uh, believe in yourself and, and believe that you made the right decision in spending $150 on a pair of basketball shoes in 1985, you know? And so you have to be confident and comfortable with yourself to make those decisions. And if you're not, and like anything, you know, the actions and consequences things we talked about, right? Uh, you know, it's, it, you have to be really uh, understanding that if, if I make this decision that if I'm going to buy these shoes, I better play well because I don't want to be, be horrible, right? I want to sit on the bench, you know, I better, I better show up and step up. And so, you know, I think that that is also one of the character building things as well. You know, I think that we have to, uh, you know, always have to invest in ourselves um, and believe in ourselves. You have to trust and believe in your goals, whether somebody else believes in them or not, you have to believe in them yourself. So long as they're good and honest, right? You have to believe in yourself and your dreams. And, and there's so much truth to that. You know, you, you can read all the books on personal development and self-help and you always hear the same thing. If you want to become a pro, act like a pro. You want to become a millionaire, act like a millionaire. You want to become uh, the comedian. I guess you got to be funny first, but, but there's always, you, you, there, there's a preface to it. And so if I want to go, you know, let's say for example, I want to become a movie producer. I, the best thing for me to do before I even start figuring out how to produce movies is go hang around with movie producers and see what they are, see who those people are. You know, here's an interesting story for you, and I'd love to get your feedback on it. When I'm in working with kids with the Go Love Now program, I've watched so many teachers when I go into inner city schools, the kids say, you know, say, I want to be an NBA player, or an NFL player. And the teacher's like, just do your work. That's how you're going to get there. Just do your work. And what they're doing is what? They're stealing their dream. It's yeah. their dream. Now, we can argue and say, well, too many inner, inner city kids are being misdirected. They're told to be rappers or NBA stars. But here's what I do. I say, so you want to be a rapper? You want to be an NBA star? What do you think they were doing in sixth grade? And they're like, oh, man, they were probably getting high in this. I'm like, oh, time out. I'm like, let's go read about Michael Jordan. Let's go read about first one in the gym, last one to leave. And so what you do is you teach them how to be that star today the way that person looked like. And so I've watched a lot of kids who the teacher said were hopeless or whatever. And I say, I think you can do it, but you've got to become this part today to be that part tomorrow. There's, there's a process. And so the day you bought those shoes, you signed up to be successful in something. So what, what I was hearing when you said that to me is loud and clear. I was visualizing these kids where the parents are saying, don't waste your money in the shoes. You're not going to basketball camp. That's not what's going to get you somewhere. But how many lessons are they learning? by investing in themselves or learning about basketball or learning to be good at something. And then let's talk about that. Your dream there, what did that turn into? You know, like, let's talk about your education and everything else, because now you've said, I am something. And then you transfer that into what you've become. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I think that's it. So I think, I think taking a step, I think that you have to surround yourself with the right friends too, mm -hmm. right? You may want to be, you know, uh, an astronaut and you may want to have all these different dreams, but you have to surround yourself with the right friends that are going to, 
that they're going to help you push that dream by making you smarter and challenging you, challenging you more. Right. So you, sure. that, that wasn't always a really important thing about parents always taught us, but you know, it, it was kind of one of those, I knew that you know, I was I wanted to, uh, to continue to, to work in, in, uh, with in a way to I could help people because I always had friends around me and I found a great friend circle and I always try to entertain people and I always wanted to help people and so you know I, I figured I was going to do something in that field to help people and so that was uh, it kind of led I played uh, soccer for a little while and I had some injuries and I went and saw a chiropractor and uh, that was sort of instrumental in getting me started along that path um, from getting treated from certain sports injuries and if I didn't play those sports I might not have gotten injured right and I and I knew that I wasn't going to be a basketball player in the NBA. I mean, come on. But I knew that being in that environment was going to make me more whole. It would teach me, A, how to manage my time better. You know, B, how to integrate myself with people, right? You have to be able to integrate yourself. If you sit on the outside, nobody's going to pay any attention to you, right? It's not about attention. It's about feeling wanted and loved and, and surrounding yourself with a group of people that you admire and, and you look up to, right? And they look up to you as well. So playing basketball was never going to go anywhere for me, but it, it went a long way for me. And I, you know, and I, and I know that my dad was never super supportive of me playing sports because he was the, you got to study, study, study. Right. But, but if and I can, he understands it now and I love him to death. He's the most amazing man in the world, but he didn't see it then because he was so focused on, like you said, the teacher says, well, you need to get study your, you know, get your education done, get your education done, which is important, but you have to be more diverse than that. Right. If you're going to be, uh, you have to, if you're going to be so narrow-minded in how you think, well, then that may be the career choice that you might want is, is to be an analytical person and look on your computer and, and do spreadsheets and, you know, be an actress, right? So everything's different. Yeah. And so that always, that helped to build my character for what I was going to do for a living. And it just sort of led into, uh, into a chiropractic career, uh, working with my hands. And uh, I had such great success seeing the chiropractor that it was one of those things I decided this is what I'm going to do and the path I'm going to take. See, that's, that, that's fantastic. And one of the things that I think is great about that is the fact that you, you did something that not a lot of people do. And, and I want to identify this so that everyone can see this because they're hearing it, but I want to identify specifically what it is. We talk about the word faith. We talk about the word trust. We talk about the word belief. You know, we talk about, you know, you know, intuitive self, you know, inner brilliance. Here's the thing. So many of us, in the world of education have been taught exactly what your dad was taught. So when he's teaching you these things saying to become an engineer, you have to do A, B, C, and D. So he's already looking at a specific outcome that an engineer is going to pay you this much money and then you're going to be happy and my job will be done well. But what about this? What if, and this is what I see happening to you and I see it now. What if everyone just taught us to turn our light on to full volume? be as bright as we can be. So our brilliance, that's what brilliance is. It's the light. Our brilliance shines. You don't need to go chase your brilliance. The universe knows what you're here for. God, creator, I don't, I don't care what you call it. You can call it whatever feels best to you. But I will say this, you understood in this moment, and this is where we, we talk about, you know, in the Go Love Now model, we're always talking about presence and listening to the intuitive self. If you're present in that moment, and you say, today, I'm going to be the best basketball player I'm going to be. Those lessons are far more priceless than doing some number crunching in a classroom environment. Because you're re realizing this, that you're an extension of creator. You're an extension of source, something big in the universe. Once you start to shine that bright, the math problem is secondary. That's easy. Going to school is the easy part. We just think that's the be-all, end-all path. So what can we tell our listeners? Because you really have done it very effectively. I mean, you've done a great job at it. How can we inspire our listeners to truly, and they're going to hear a lot more about this in the second part of the show, but to truly understand how to follow their own brilliance? Because how many people right now are sitting there that their parents said, you know, go, go to school for an engineering. Art will never make you money. Marry that man. He's got a lot of money. Um, keep your dad's business because, you know, we've been doing it for years and never, ever fulfilled their dreams. Like, what can we tell them? You know, it's, it's so important. Um, your presence is important, right? I mean, when, to, you, when you walk into a room, you have to smile. You have to, I think that's, a, that's how you turn on your light. You turn on your light every day by being such a, you know, just a person that people want to be around. Or people want, they see that person and they go, wow, that person has energy and electricity that 
I want, right? Just like my meeting with you. I, I, I really felt like that the first time I met you. I was like, you know, I, I love the electricity. I love the energy. And so, you know, there, therefore a, a friendship is built. And I think that's so important. You can't put the cart before the horse, right? You have to, you have to realize if you are going to be successful, you're going to run into people that doubt you. You're going to run into all those things, right? And I think, like you said, with the faith, trust, faith, trust, and belief, we have to have all of those in ourselves and we have to have that in people around us, right? We have to have faith in that person. We have to have trust in these people. We have to have belief in those people, just like you have to have those three things in yourself. You know, and if you don't, then your light's never going to shine at its brightest. Listen, my light's been dull many times in my life, right? Where you have to figure out where am I going to get some kerosene to, to, you know, get this thing going again, right? We all have gone through that. And I mean, my life, life has never been rosy and happy 100% of the time, like nobody's. But you know what, when, when you hit those road bumps, it's like, all right, how do I turn that light back on to, to get back on the, the right path, right? Because when, if, if your headlights aren't on, you can't see where you're driving, right? So you have to always keep that light shining. And that light shining is, uh, you know, I think those three terms you said, that the faith, trust, and belief, I think those, you have to have that in yourself, right? Um, and I think that that's probably, I think in, in some ways that might explain how I would feel about explaining that to kids. Uh, and then they kind of, sometimes they're, they get lost, but you, you have to explain to them that you, you can have, you know, an idea or a dream, but don't ever stop chasing that dream, right? If you, if you feel like the dream can't become reality and the people around you that you trust say, you know what, that may not be a reality, then that may be true, right? But you still have to trust in yourself to try it. But, you know, it, it's kind of, I think that those are, I think, important things to keep that light shining and get the, get into that, walk into that room and just smile. You know, now that we can't shake hands, unfortunately, just your power has to come through posture and how you feel, right? You walk into a room and you see people slouching or they're down, right? And posture is a product of mood. You know, you can usually tell somebody's like somebody misses a two foot putt, their head's hanging, mm -hmm. right? Uh, somebody didn't pass a test, their head's hanging, but pick your head back up because there's another test that you can take, right? Or there's another putt that you can make, or you can make a birdie on the next hole, or you know, whatever it is, you can shoot that three and hit a jumper, right? you know, whatever it is, that's your light. That's new, that's the new kerosene in your light is is pushing yourself through that that barrier. Yeah, and that's and and and, and to go back what you said or what you said earlier still applies here. It's that one bite at a time, one day. You know, there's a new day. I mean, everything is one bite at a time. When one of the things that I remember from doing triathlons is when I would see a huge hill. I remember the first time I got on my bike, we're going up. I, you might know where it is over near Barton Creek. There's that one crazy hill that everyone yeah. rides up. Yeah. So I remember looking up at it and I ended up making it because I was in pretty darn good shape. But it, I almost didn't make it to the top because I looked at it, it almost killed me. And one of my friends was like, you were looking up the whole time. One, 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 just keep going. And so the next time I went up it, all of a sudden I was up it. And it's literally, I mean, I can share that all day long and you're talking about it and practicing one butt at a time, one day at a time. If I don't make this putt today, think of this. Look at the greatest quarterbacks, the greatest players of all time. Brett Favre or let's take like Brett Favre as a quarterback or Babe Ruth as a, uh, a hitter. Brett Favre would throw an interception and two seconds later he'd throw the exact same pass just out of the defender's hands for a touchdown like nothing ever happened. Because it's a new day. It's a new play. How was Babe Ruth the leader in strikeouts and home runs? Because he swung for the fences and never believed he'd strike out. Do you strike out? Sure. Do we see all the misses that Michael Jordan made? I mean, did he, did he miss? No, we see the makes. Because that's what everybody remembers. But you can only make it if you try. You got to take the shot. And so you're saying all of it. Like, we, we need everybody to understand this. It's one day at a time one bite at a time. you got new choices every day. And you said it, show up. You were talking about shining your lights bright. Show up every day. Just show up. You were saying, bring it with a smile. Bring it with, show up. That's it. You don't, you don't know if you want to go to the gym that day. You, know, you don't think you're good enough for the job. You don't want to meet that new person that someone wants to introduce you to because you're not good enough. One thing I want people to understand right here, and I know you get this, Everybody is an extension of creator. There's no such thing as not good enough. There's no such thing. And you get that and you exemplify that. And that's why we connect. Yeah, I love that passion. That's so true. That's such, that's so true. Um, and I, I, I think the connection that has to always be that 
that the guiding light, man. That's just a, it's such a good, good way to look at things. It's how do we get ourselves out of a situation? How do we get somebody to pat us on the backs and say, Hey man, let's go pick that head up. Just like Brett Favre, when he throws that interception, you know, he's up on, he's on the bench. He's, you know, he's understanding. Okay. Right, I gotta, I gotta pick myself up. I got people around me that are depending on me. Right. Yeah. It's not just about Brett Favre. It's not just about Mike Bat. You know, it's not just about Scott Grant. It's about the people that depend on us as well. You know, we have to feel like we have passion for those people. And, you know, when you show passion for people and you, uh, you know, I, I love to work with students as well. And, you know, I, I would have students come through my clinic to see if, uh, A, if they're high school students, if that's what they want to do for a career, or if they're in school to, to me I'd mentor them. You know, if, if I was not in the right mood with them, I'm setting a bad example. They're, they're going to look at me and go, oh, this is how you're supposed to do things? No. You, you know, regardless of your bad day, don't make it somebody else's bad day. You know, make it a good day for you on the next day. I knew this would be a great interview. Make sure you join us next week as Dr. Bat, a.k.a. Batman, returns with us again. This week, we learned a little bit about his struggles and his upbringing and what brought him to today. Next week, we're going to learn how he's applied all that in his professional life. Stay tuned. We'll see you then. This episode of The Awakening You is brought to you by the Speaking to the Heart podcast network. If you'd like to experience our interactive show notes for this episode, we invite you to visit us at speakingtotheheart.org. Hey.